Lord, you have our attention. And every eye is fixed on you. Burn away every distraction so you can move. To bring you praise, open up the gates of heaven right here, right now. We seek you right here, right now. We trust you, your presence falling down, our worship pouring out right here. To bring you praise, open up the gates of heaven right here, right now. We seek you right here, right now. We trust you, your presence falling down, our worship pouring out right here right now right here right now we seek you right here right now we trust you your presence falling down our worship pouring out right here right now right here right now and this is where healing starts and this is where lives are changed the spirit come and break through break through you have made a way and this is where we belong here in your full embrace spirit come and break through break through you have made Right now, right here, right now, in this room tonight, let it fall. Right here, right now, we lift you up. Right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. We seek you right here, right now. We trust you, your presence falling down, our worship pouring out right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, right here. Right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, we invite you to move, Lord, right here, right now, we expect you to move. 
right here, right now. We call on your name right here, right now. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? And do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling and bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You paid the price, Lord. Father's 
His arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Christ oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. Jesus is calling.
and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Somebody sing it. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance, we'll dance, we'll dance in your presence, we'll dance in your presence, we'll dance in your presence. We'll dance in your presence, King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. Oh, I just want to be with you. Sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, and feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I'm melting your peace, it's so overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. And 
This love is so deep It's more than I can stand I'm melting your peace It's so well Oh, overwhelm us tonight The more I seek you The more I seek you The more I find you The more I find you Oh, the more I love you I want to sit at your feet Drink from the cup in your hand Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I'm melting your peace. It's overwhelming. Want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I'm melting your peace. It's overwhelming. Oh, it's so.
God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. God, I thank you that you're faithful and you never give up on us. That you pursue us. You pursue us, Lord. Even when we're looking so far away from you, I've talked to people this week that they, they, don't, even, they don't even care about anything. They've run so far from you that they can't hear your voice, they can't feel your presence. And the situation looks hopeless. I even thought today, Lord, golly, man, it's, it's almost hopeless. And I thank you for a song like this. It reminds me that even though I may look and it looks dark and it looks terrible, but you are pursuing that person. And you, even though I love them and, and I want what's best for them and I've talked till I'm blue in the face, Lord, you never quit pursuing them. You're pursuing them, not just thinking about them. You're pursuing them. And the lies and the torment of the devil that has tried to destroy all of our lives, Lord, you kicked down those walls. You came to us. You rescued us. We owe you everything. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Thank you, because I wasn't even worth saving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for reaching down on touching every single one of us, Lord, that is saved in this room, Lord. You pursued us. You chased us down. You put people in our path. You did little things that get our attention and let us know that you was there. Even when we were so far away from you, we didn't even see you, hear you, or anything, feel you, or anything, Lord. And God, I pray that over people in our life that are away from you. Some that don't never have known you. Holy Ghost, keep pursuing. Keep chasing. That reckless love of God is a love that we can't even understand. Thank you. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for continuing to pursue. We honor you in this place. We love you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Continue to move by your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know they wasn't supposed to do that song tonight, but they was. Man, I, 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 I'm serious, man. I see some... I see some desperate situations, and um, man, I've seen people that's been so close to God. I mean, you know, it's almost to the point to where I envy some things in their life spiritually that have fallen away from God, and it's sad, man. It rips my heart out. But this, that song right there, the reckless love of God, Amen. I'm, I'm just going to preach a few minutes because we got a lot of stuff to do. But I want you to go to Colossians chapter 1. I've been talking about discipleship, kingdom discipleship. And discipleship means to, totally surrendering to, to God. Totally surrendering. I'm talking about totally surrendering. You accept Jesus Christ, and then you total, totally surrender your life to where you actually become a slave to Jesus. And we talked about that. And we've been talking about the power and authority, right? And we talked about, and you, I, I want y'all to hear this part because it's pretty good. But we talked about last week about how Satan does have power. All right? He's got power, but Satan has no authority. 
okay, and I use this illustration. I'm talking to you for a minute. Y'all go with that. Y'all, y'all, y'all can listen too. But you, you've been in a football game, right? All right? And you say how big those football players are. Cameron, you know. You've been hit by them. They're big old football players. Them, them linemen, man, they they huge. And used to they were all big and slow. Now they're big and fast and strong. And they have a lot of power. But guess what? The little referee walking around with the whistle, he's got authority. So he can take that big old boy and throw him out the game if he wants to. And that's the way it is with us, man. Satan does have power. We'd be liars if we didn't say he had power. He has power, but he don't have authority. Okay? So we have the power of Jesus Christ working in our life, and, and then we have the authority of Jesus Christ working in our life. But the problem in the church today, we're not walking in that authority. You can say, out your old me. Maybe, let me say this. We're not walking in authority like we could, okay? I, I know sometimes we're walking in that power and authority, but then sometimes we're not. But in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 13, and I'm going to go through this quickly. It says, he has saved us from the kingdom of darkness. He has brought us into the kingdom of the son that he loves. So what we got to realize is before we got saved, we was in the kingdom of darkness, Okay? Talking about the kingdom, kingdom disciples. We, we were in the kingdom of darkness, was following uh, the ways of the world, and now that we've been saved, God has delivered us out of that darkness, or he should have delivered us out of that darkness, amen? And it says this, because of what the Son has done, we have been set free because of him. All of our sins have been forgiven because of him. Not because of us and how good we are, but because of what he did on the cross, he's forgiven us of our sins. Now I'm going somewhere, okay? Christ is the exact likeness of God who can't be seen. Christ was God in the flesh, came to the earth, God in the flesh. He is first and he is over all creation. You see, we talked a little bit last week about how when Adam and Eve sinned, the power was shifted and it went to Satan. He became the ruler of this world. That's what the Bible says, that Satan is the ruler of this world. Remember, he's got power. He don't have authority. Okay? And then we went on and it says, Christ the exact likeness of, of, um, of God who can't be seen. He is the first. He is over all creation. All things were created by him. He created everything in heaven and on earth. He created everything that can be seen and everything that can't be seen. Satan's a created being. God created him. Okay? God created him. So God's over him. Christ is over him. Has all authority and power over him. You remember when he went to, to hell, he, he took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So it says this, he created kings and powers and rulers and authorities. Oh, help me, Jesus. He created kings, powers, rulers, and and authority. Some of the authority that we're looking at today has lost their mind. I'm talking lost their cotton-picking mind. And church, listen to me, and then I'm going to move on. Do not be silent. If you're silent, you're guilty. I don't care who likes it. I don't care who thinks it's popular. We need to stand for what the Word of God stands for, no matter who likes it and who don't like it. And we need to voice our opinion. I'm voicing mine. Some of you don't like it, but I'm voicing mine. I feel like the Lord's told me, you better, you better stand up right now, because if you don't stand up right now and you don't voice your opinion now, in, in, in another year, you ain't going to have an opinion. Okay. Before anything was created, he was already there. He holds everything together. We read this scripture a couple weeks ago. And he is the head of the body, which is the church. He is the beginning. He is the first of those that was raised from the dead. Meaning, he's the first one that's ever raised from the dead that stayed alive. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Others, Elijah was raised from the dead. He's the first one that raised from the dead and that is alive. He's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. It says that happened so that we would be far above everything. So that, who? That he would be far above everything. God was pleased to have his whole nature living in Christ. Every bit of God was in Christ. 
And then it says this, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself because of what Christ has done. He brought all things back to himself because of what Christ had had done. That, That includes all things on earth and in heaven. God made peace through Christ's blood, through his death on the cross. Now remember, we talked about how Adam and Eve had had the power and authority, and the only thing they was not supposed to do was go eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, right? As soon as they did, they lost the power and authority. So there had to be a plan B. Now, God already knew it was going to happen, but we had to have a plan B. Uh, Tony tells an awesome story. He likes the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know why, but I know we got some Dallas Cowboy fans in here. Now, don't you get so excited up here. (laughs) But he, he said that he used to, man, this is awesome, but he used to be their chaplain, and he used to get to go to the practices out uh, at the field. And he said that he, he even caught passes, you know, from, from some of the quarterbacks and stuff. But he said they had this play that's called the waggle. The waggle. That sounds weird. That sounds like a cowboy play. They always waggling. Haggling and waggling. But it's called the waggle. And what happened was the quarterback could get behind the, 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 um, the center, he would get the ball, he'd drop back, and his, his option, the first option was that Drew Pearson was supposed to be running down the sideline, and he was going to throw a touchdown pass to Drew Pearson. But if the uh, defensive backs or some of the, the linebackers blitzed, he wouldn't have time to stay back in the pocket, so he had to call a waggle, and what he did was he threw it to Tony Dorsett right out there on the corner. And then Tony Dorsett would, y'all remember that, Right? Well, this is what happened. The first Adam fell. The first Adam fell away from God. He he fell. He separated himself when they sinned. So God had to call a waggle, a spiritual waggle. Now, y'all to humor me a little bit. And that spiritual waggle was Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. When he catches the ball, ain't nobody tackling him. Amen. Amen. He run a touchdown. So you had to bring everything back to him. We, I, I don't think something I know for me I don't think about that a lot but everything was lost I know I was lost but everything was lost at one time and and only because I'm talking about everything was lost creation everything was lost because it's in the power of Satan so when Jesus came to the cross and he died and then rose again had to complete it God raised him from the dead then that's when all authority was given back, okay? That's a good, good word, by the way. And he goes on and says this. At one time, you were separated from God. Now, he's talking about us. At one time, you were separated from God. You were enemies in your minds because of your evil ways. Sin kept us separated from God. Our lifestyle kept us separated from God. Some of your lifestyles right now is separating you from the blessings of God. Well, I've heard people quote the scripture and they've got, they, yeah, they quote it right, but they've got it all wrong. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. You're exactly right. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Jesus brought us back. So God's going to love us forever no matter what, but sin separates us from God. There's a huge difference. Huge difference. So we got to make sure that we're not separated, that we're not separating ourselves from the blessings of God. I've talked to people this week that have taken that spiritual umbrella protection off and walked out into the world, and man, they are in a mess. I'm talking about a mess. We got to make sure we stay linked up with God. Because if we're not, we're going to be in trouble. At one time, you were separated from God. Your enemies in your, in your minds because of the evil ways, but because Christ died, God has brought you back to himself. Christ's death has made you holy in God's sight. Hallelujah. We're made holy in God's sight because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Don't nobody get too excited. So now you don't have to have any flaw so now you don't have to have any flaw because of what christ done for us his righteousness has justified us that word justify means just as if you never did it 
because of the second Adam, because of the waggle, spiritual waggle play, it's like we never did it. Because when Jesus came, his sacrifice was perfect, spotless Lamb of God. So because of him, now we have right relationship with the Father. Y'all good? I'm going to read Ephesians right quick, Ephesians 1. In a couple, next week maybe or the next, something like that, we're going to start talking about being seated in heavenly places. And we're going to talk about that, and it's going to be good. But in Ephesians 1, I want you to go to 9 and 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, He showed us the mystery of his plan. It was in keeping with what he had wanted to do. It was what he had planned through Christ. This was his plan. He knew Adam was going to fall, so his next plan was he had to send his son because he was the only one that was going to be able to pay the price. And it says here, it says he, he had his plan through Christ. Listen, it will all come about when history has been completed. God then, God will then bring together all things in heaven and on earth under one ruler, the ruler Jesus Christ. It's coming. It's coming. Look around. Open your spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. We've been talking about birth pains, giving birth pains, and how the, the earth is groaning. For its restoration back to God. When all things are going to come under Christ's reign. We're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. We're seeing crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. I talked about it. I preached about it a couple weeks ago. And then this, Now listen, this moonshiner guy, he, he, may, he may drink moonshine. I don't know what he does, but he had a word. Amen. You didn't listen to it. Go listen. He he spoke of every single thing, used every single scripture. It's almost, he don't know me, but it's almost like he knew me, wrote notes down and spoke on what I said, even from the locusts in Africa. Amen. Craziness. I'm telling you, God is speaking to people and he's telling them, you better get ready. Better get ready. We got to be right and helping others to get right. We're talking about discipleship. We're talking about discipling others, loving others, reaching them. We got to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop a few minutes early. I got tons of more stuff. Nah, I, I got to do this. This is good. It's kind of like this. When a man marries a woman, the Bible says that the woman comes to the man and they become one flesh. Right? So she falls under the headship of that man. I've seen this happen lots of times, and I'm sure I'm going to struggle with it one day when Allison gets married. But what happens when the woman decides that she's going to go to her daddy all the time and ask for advice instead of talking to her husband and getting advice from her husband? Y'all awful quiet. What happens? That's a problem. There ain't no man except for my son-in-law when he comes likes that. My son-in-law's going to like me so much he ain't going to mind. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. No, but listen. And that's what happens when we've been under the lordship of Jesus Christ. He's brought us into a new kingdom. He's brought us out of darkness into a new kingdom. But when we get in this new kingdom... We're under his lordship. Then all of a sudden, we want to go back under the devil's lordship and ask his advice or get advice from the devil's people. Amen. It's the same way. It's going to cause problems. And all you young people, I hope you got that. Because you're going to get married one day. and You need to be, stay in the lordship of Jesus Christ, then the lordship of your husband. And you need to realize it's going to cause problems. And when we step out on God, it's really going to cause problems. So we're in his kingdom. He's bought us. He's paid the price. We're in his kingdom. If you've, accept, if you've accepted him, he's your Lord and Savior. So quit stepping out into the other kingdom. Amen. Amen.
That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've done for us, everything you've provided for us. You are a good father, and we love you. Help us to stay in your kingdom. Help us to quit flip-flopping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Help us to quit going back to that pigsty, that mud, that mess that we've been in before. Help us to stay away from that stuff. That's not, that's not what you want for us. You want us to have power and authority coming down from above. Lord, help us to walk this thing out and serve you to the best of our ability. Lord, if there's anyone in here that's not saved, anyone in here that's backslidden, that's lost, anyone in here that's just come cold, Lord, lukewarm, draw them back, Lord. That reckless love that you have for us, draw, draw them back. I love you and I give you praise for it. I pray that every soul in here is saved and, and everyone listening to me, Lord. If there's anyone that's not saved, may they call out on the name of the Lord tonight before it's too late. And we love you and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Okay, before you leave, got some instruction. We need help. Um, are we moving all the chairs like to the side and then putting the tables out first? Is that what we normally do? Where's Dan at? Okay, so if y'all will help us, we're going to move all the tables over here. You just grab a couple. Try not to slide them. Uh, we're going to get a couple of little hand, hand trucks out here. We'll start getting, but if we can get all the tables over, uh, all the chairs over here, then we've got a bunch of tables we're going to bring out. We need to go get the tables over in the other building. And some men will go help do that. Let the kiddies get out. Don't, don't hit the kiddos and uh, mess them up. But uh, I love you guys. And please come Friday night, invite friends and stuff. Jonathan Foster is going to be bringing the message. It's going to be good. So, uh, Teresa, you good on all your announcements with the cakes? Everybody knows what they're doing. Hallelujah. Hey, I love you guys, and please stay and help us. Amen? God bless you.